All right. Hey, everyone. It's been, wow, it's been probably close to a week at least since we've had a, had a full-on podcast. Um, as, uh, as per usual, this episode is brought to you by our dear friends at uh, Hot Pepper Communications, uh, Kim Siever, hotpepper.ca. Um, Kim specializes in social media management, um, copy editing, different um, different modules that you can buy. Um, he does. Uh, he works with different companies, actually all around the world, doing different types of uh, uh, blog posting and, and different types of editing, and he even does work on uh, grad thesis, editing people's grad thesis. So um, anyway, check out their website hotpepper.ca, and you can check out the full ad for Hot Pepper Communications at the uh, end of the podcast. And then of course our, uh, our other dear friend Cody at Sweetgrass Bison, sweetgrassbison.ca. And uh, Cody, he's got um, a variety of different types of bison meat available. Um, you buy the 25 pound pack of meat, um, you get a cookbook with it. So check out uh, sweetgrassbison.ca, check out the ad at the end of the podcast if you're interested. Um, he sells to a lot of gyms, actually. Hmm. I, when I had him on before, he was actually chatting about uh, sending deliveries up to Calgary. I guess there's a few gyms that buy uh, buy his meat. So yeah. that's curious. Yeah, well, I guess because it's, it's really healthy, right? There's no right. growth hormones or anything like that in it. Like it's all no antibiotics, nothing like that. So yeah. yeah, that's right. And I don't know. I don't know if I talked about it last time I was here, but you know, we use bison in our ceremonies Oh, okay. and yeah. my wife makes pemmican with it. So she dries it, yeah. you know, dries it on a line and then like flash cooks it and then pounds it and mixes it with fat and berries. Okay. Uh, but apparently if you, you know, her, her mom who taught her the pemmican, um, said that, you know, she's used a lot of, a lot of beef in the past. Okay. Yeah. And when she does pemmican with beef she gets splinters in her fingers from the meat from oh the seriously meat. oh yeah she gets splinters of meat in her fingers but when she uses bison no splinters what would cause that i wonder i don't know it's just a to- the fiber of the meat maybe, yeah, yeah or? The fiber oh. of the meat yeah, oh, okay it's a different kind of consistency huh. even though like when i eat bison i can't really i don't distinguish it that much from beef oh really okay no no yeah. but i still like it yeah, like I, I, yeah. I just psychologically I like knowing that I've eaten bison instead okay. of beef. Yeah. But I don't notice that big of a taste. But there's certainly something different about it if you get splinters in yeah. your hand from beef and not from bison. <laughs> wow, that's that's really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. No. Well, and if yeah, anybody that's out there is interested in it, uh, we'll uh, we'll wrap up the ad portion here. Yeah. No, check out. Uh, he's got it. Cody's got it at uh, Urban Grocers in town. We're actually gonna try and get Urban Grocers on the podcast one time. Yeah, so it's, it's gonna take a little bit of work, I guess. You know, a little bit of stage fright, apparently. So, anyway, we're going to try it out here, and we'll see what happens. But, uh, yeah, check out Cody's ad at the end of the podcast, too. So, today, we have our friend, Ryan Heavyhead, back on the podcast. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Second second time on. Second time on. To it. Yeah, yeah, no, we, uh, we when we chatted in, I think it was October. Yeah, October, it was November. Back. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we were chatting about having you back on. So, um, it was actually, it's definitely one of the more popular podcasts we got. Uh, was it? Yeah. We got some comments and, and different people really appreciated it. So. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Good to hear. So, I guess today we're, um, one of the things probably wanted to start off with is, um, we touched on a little bit when we chatted last time, but a little bit about uh, um, spirituality, in particular Blackfoot spirituality. And so, um, just wanted to have you on to to chat about, I guess, maybe to start off sort of some, some basic roots in uh, Blackfoot spirituality. Okay, yeah. sure, sure, sure. Um, yeah, there's, a, there's a, of course, a lot to say about it. When I think about roots of Blackfoot spirituality, I start thinking about the origin stories, you know, which would kind of be like biblical stories, right. I guess, but from the Blackfoot side of things. So... Blackfoot, those those story sequences in the Blackfoot sense start off it with sun and moon stories. They're kind of like pre-human stories okay. about what was going on, you know, here uh, before there were humans and and how um, the earth, uh, well, not necessarily the earth, but um, this place was shaped and this kind of a thing. Mm-hmm. So I actually, um, one of the stories that I find really to me, I make a strong connection with it because I, I can see um, different layers of, 
of meaning in it. Like a, all of these stories are always, you know, they have so many layers to them, but sometimes it, it takes a lifetime to start appreciating those right. <laughs> the yeah. different layers. Yeah. So there, there's one story in particular called the Schizogamics, um, which is about the seven stars of the Big Dipper. And that story in particular kind of sets out how um, the homeostasis of this living space is created. It's, mm -hmm. There's uh, certain gifts that the son gives to seven of his children um, to escape danger. And when they use those, it creates things like mountains and forests and mm. river valleys, um, electrical storms, rain, wind, um, and uh, even even the, the atmosphere itself. Okay. Right? Yeah. Um, which gets mistranslated a lot. Like if you read these stories in some of the books that you might find, like you might be able to order off Amazon or something, you yeah. know, the, the, the word motoyaki gets translated as ocean. Okay. But yeah. it, it's really talking about the atmosphere. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's interesting. Because, yeah, you, like even the, the Bible, they talk about the waters above and the waters below. So you can, you can right. see actually where that kind of, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. translation yeah. might come from there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, that's a really cool story. And that, that's kind of the earliest, to, the earliest of times you get this, you get this um, uh, split between Schizogamics, the seven star story. And another story called Miochpokoiks, which is about the Pleiades, mm. um, and that one is is uh, more of a, you know, there's some of that story I think that has been lost oh, in time. Okay. Yeah, um, you know, I keep searching myself for a thicker version of it, but because of the way that these that these uh, that the symbols for those stories are represented. Um, here you see them if you ever see a Blackfoot painted lodge and you can even go online on the internet and just Google you know Blackfoot painted lodge or something you're gonna come up with a bunch of different examples of teepees mm -hmm. that are that have painted designs on them and up on the what is called the ear of the teepees which is the the flaps that you can close to keep to direct the smoke right yeah, uh, yeah. against the wind you have on the on the north side you have these seven circles these seven white circles in the shape of a crescent and that's the Eschitzikumix um, which is the Big Dipper which is the seven stars but it's also the reason that's in the shape of a crescent and not the Big Dipper itself mm -hmm. um, is because it's associated with the moon and the winter and the north okay. and the cold and the feminine um, and and all of these you know kind of aspects um, sometimes you will see it represented just like the dipper itself um, but I think that's a later version <coughs> the early kind of sun and moon version it's the moon you see the crescent okay. yeah. on the south side of the teepee on the ear you're gonna see the Pleiades constellation and it's one star surrounded by five um, and that is also not just the Pleiades, but the sun and male and the south and the summer and that aspect, right? So okay. in Blackfoot, um, understanding of both the cosmology and the seasons and nature and everything, we basically, we got, we got two. We got male and female, mm -hmm. summer and winter. Okay. And... Um, and this, the winter is always seven moons. Those are also moons, by the way, not only stars. But oh, also okay. Th that's what I mean. Uh, yeah. They're so layered. Yeah. Um, but they're also they're also moons. So you get seven um, winter moons always, okay. and then you get five to six summer moons depending on on uh, the round. Okay. And so um, we know. From the Schizogamic story, what those seven winter moons line up with in terms of um, in terms of climatic uh, or or geologic um, processes that support the homeostasis of life, but on the on the Miochbokoik side, I think 
they also line up with some such processes, some okay. aspects yeah. of the natural world. Yeah. But the thick story has been lost. Oh, so we've got okay. a, we've got a kind of a um, uh, a, a thin story. Yeah. And the thin story involves um, some children who were not given the buffalo calf robes at the beginning of summer. When the first um, yellow, uh, what they're, they're called, um, uh, buffalo bean, I think in English, people call them buffalo bean or golden bean. Oh, it's the, a yellow the flower, flower that yeah. you'll see in the mm -hmm. coolies. Mm -hmm. um, in Blackfoot, they're called otsikini. And it's it's referring to a shoe because it has a the fl flower itself has a shape of a shoe. Okay. But when those flowers come out, um, two things happen. You have the tobacco planting in the past. That's when you get the tobacco planting going, um, and that's when you hunt the buffalo calves. Mm. And the buffalo calves were hunted be mainly because of their um, their skins. Okay. You know they have very bright colored. Mm fancy skins mm -hmm. and young young people would always get new buffalo calf oh, okay. robes at yeah. the beginning of summer kind of like getting a new uh, outfit yeah, for christmas that's, that's right <laughs> that's right you're getting your you're getting your air jordans or whatever and getting back for back to school that's yeah. right and so you know in the story you get a, a few kids you know five or six kids that they don't get their uh, mm their fancy robes right and so the, the rich kids are kind of picking on them mm. and they get mad and they uh, they uh, they abandon their um, in some versions of the story they abandon their their camp um, they decide to go to the Sun and the moon mm -hmm. and complain about how mean their their parents and their people are and this kind of a thing in other versions um, they beat up the kids with the robes and then the rich dads of the kids with the robes force their parents to abandon them. And oh, so, wow. Yeah, so there's there's Ooh. different versions of the oh, story. Drastic, wow, okay, yeah. Um, but the, the version that I like is that they go and they complain to the sun and the moon and mm. say these people are being bad. And then the, the sun um, decides to take vengeance on the people, and he basically creates this... Um, uh, a drought okay. and and just heat 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 and people end up having to like dig in to the sides of the coolies and okay. caves and stuff to hide in yeah the, the rivers all um, dry up and uh, ends up being that the dogs are digging in to to find you know any, any bit of water and right. stuff yeah. and the dogs themselves actually eventually end up crying howling to the the moon begging for her to do something about this because it's not their fault that the humans were mm -hmm. mean to their children and so the moon ends up um bringing bringing rain and kind okay. of you know, bringing relief to this whole thing but the children end up being uh the milk book weeks and so they you know they disappear during that season and that's you know typically is always associated around the world around at least the northern hemisphere um, with the time when you start your planting and so here it was associated with uh, the tobacco planting okay. so so what kind of so I'm, I've always been curious about the tobacco um, like what is like what would tobacco around because tobacco can be different things right it can be different different plants. these are these are plants from the nicotine species oh okay um, they're actually, it's the people with the beaver bundles that used to coordinate the planting and keep okay. the seeds. And so we started about maybe 10 years ago, hmm. um, because the, the tobacco planting ended here in 1950s. Okay. Um, it, the last place it was, was in, <clears throat> in Siksika by Calgary where they had the whole ceremony. It's a big ceremony, too. Okay. It's a, it rivals the Sundance. Oh, the, really? Okay. The, yeah. yeah, it's very extensive. Um, but, yeah, the last place it was at was at, at Six at Guy, I think in maybe 1958. Mm. Um, it, before that, it already had ended here at the Bloods and um, ended at Bikani. And so Six at Guy was the last kind of holdout. Um, and, in fact, when... 
when Abraham Maslow and his group went there in 1938, the elders had already kind of predicted that the tobacco planting was going to be gone. And so they used the researchers and put a whole bunch of information into their notebooks about tobacco okay, planting. Okay, yeah, yeah. So that, so that um, it would be preserved. Yeah, so that yeah. it could be preserved for future generations. So we've been using that, trying to figure out the ceremony again, okay. how to do the ceremony. And there's some, a little bit of film footage of it, and, uh, and uh, Jane and Lucy and Hanks made uh, uh, some audio recordings of it. So we've got a lot to go with in terms of revitalizing the ceremony, except for the growing of the tobacco part, because growing tobacco mm. here is really difficult. Well, I was going to say, because it's not, <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's, it's not like, you know, Georgia or something. That's where, right. With fields of tobacco. So, yeah. yeah, that's right. There's... There's actually two species um, that were grown here as part of this complex. And the first species, um, most likely somebody got them by trade or something mm. like this. It's a, it's a little bit of a taller plant, it might be, but when it's, if you get a really good, full grown, you know, really lush one, it might be three feet tall. Um, but, the old stories that pertain to it talk about how um, there was one guy who kind of got this plant mm -hmm. and uh, and was knew how to use it and he was growing it and he was keeping it to himself okay. and people were jealous about this mm -hmm. that he mm -hmm. ha he had this and was keeping it to himself and so um, these brothers there was three brothers and they they were having these dreams and um, they each dreamed of different parts of how to uh, build up make a pipe and this right. was the first uh, the first actual like, <coughs> smoking pipes that mm -hmm. were made how to make a pipe and use the use the tobacco but they couldn't get the tobacco and so one of them um, went out and he fasted you know in the, in the coolies he went out in the coolies and he fasted and he just sat there and, and uh, you know starved himself and thirsted mm. himself and eventually this was called a ski in Blackfoot it's a it's a tiger salamander um, came to him and asked him you know why he's doing mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. and he told him you know try, well, I want to try to get this plant and he's well we can do even better and <laughs> he brought these birds in the, in the past they say all birds were white okay every bird was just white and it's mm -hmm. own it's not in recent times but at what some point they started getting their colors okay. and that's why you know still today every type of bird you'll sometimes find white versions of mm -hmm. um, all white versions and so there was um he he called these birds and he was started sending them up to the sun to ask for seeds mm -hmm. and um so he sends one up and it goes only so far and it comes back down and its color has changed it's become a bluebird <laughs> okay up yeah. another <laughs> yeah. comes back down its color has changed to you know yellow it's the yellow warbler yeah and he goes goes back another one goes up and you know comes back down and it's it has got like black and red so it's like a, a red start and then he sends this other bird up there and it goes and goes and goes and actually makes it to the to the sun to mm -hmm. ask for the seeds and comes back down with the seeds in his mouth but he's turned black because he's gotten so close to the sun yeah and that's the crow, crow. Okay. and the crow ends up being actually the most powerful spiritual bird in the Blackfoot tradition. Okay. A lot of people when they think of indigenous traditions they yeah. think about eagles. Right. But right. crow raven in a lot of different traditions yeah, is pretty yeah. prominent. Right? Yeah, 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 that's yeah. right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah, here it's in, in Blackfoot the crow and the raven are actually considered the same. Mm -hmm. Raven is just called a machgeisto which means large crow. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. yeah. So Talking and, and I, I I absolutely want to sorry go ahead yeah I was I was just before yeah. we get off track though yeah. that seed that he brings back is a much smaller plant okay and it it's a plant that actually looks like something that could grow here 
Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that we could grow naturally here. Okay. Um, Adrian and I have been working on growing the tobacco plants, both species, from seeds from mm -hmm. the beaver bundles that were brought to museums. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, way back. And we do we do have now a really good seed base, but we have yet to figure out how we can grow them without tending to them. And this is was the right. magic of it in the past. Yeah. So you had to you had they would they would plant the tobacco and then they would leave. And right. They wouldn't come back until harvest. Okay. Yeah. And so how No irrigation. We, yeah. No irrigation. <laughs> no irrigation and those little when they start coming out in both species <clears throat> They're just these little tiny spindly little things that that mm. are so delicate. Any little bit of you know, if you overheat them, mm -hmm. they shrivel and die. If you get too much water, they fall over and die. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you have to be really careful wow. with them. Yeah. And so, like we've been growing them in our in our backyards and trying you know different things, but we haven't been able to get tobacco that we can just not. Yeah, tend have to, to tend to, yeah. yeah, at all. So, isn't it yeah. amazing that in the course of, say, fifty years, mm. you know that even you know that that knowledge is lost. Yeah, yeah. You know, and uh, just total tangent here. I mean, I I mean, I'm going to I'm going to Peru here in in July, and one of the, I'm it's I'm going to you know Sacsayhuaman and different places. You know, the the major um, constructions. You know. Uh, some Inca or the, the Inca improved upon, but people before them had actually built, right? You know, and the Incas themselves, they said, you know, for some of these, we had no idea who built this. These, these were here by the time we got here, right? Um, you know, and archaeologists said, oh, well, we know this, this, and that, and we know the way that this, you know, this worked out. Yet in 50 years, you know, you know, the, the knowledge of the, of the tobacco plant was lost yeah or how to how to grow it you know without tending it is lost yeah. you know it just it makes you think you know how much do we really know yeah <laughs> about the and world that we live in really yeah I mean, for sure and a lot yeah. more than that i mean i've i've definitely um uh checked out some of the ideas that people have talked about regarding um the idea that something happened like around the time of the end of the last ice age mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. was really really drastic right that shook us up and we lost a lot. whole yeah. chapter yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah or more than more one than chapter. a chapter yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> everything yeah right and yeah. start from scratch yeah right and yeah. i don't doubt it you yeah. know yeah well actually on that subject actually i was corresponding and i, I haven't said anything before now because i wasn't sure but it looks like i'm gonna have uh, graham hancock Oh yeah, on the podcast. Really, sometime in October. That that's gonna yeah. be awesome. So we'll see. We'll see if it. Oh. We'll see if it happens. I I emailed him because I asked him. I said he's got a new book coming out, and the Canadian releases in September. Right. Uh, called uh, Magicians of the Gods, um, which is a sequel to his bestseller twenty years ago, Fingerprints of the Gods. Right. Um, and the Canadian release is set for September. So I, I've corresponded with Graham a little bit, not not very much. Um, and I said to him, I said, okay, I, you know, I just put my cards on the table and said, all right, listen, Graham, I got this podcast and, you know, it's mainly confined to Western Canada and, you know, particularly Southern Alberta, but, you know, Western Canada, a lot of people in Western Canada listen. I know people in Edmonton that listen and all that sort of stuff. I said, love to have you on. And even if it's just for 20 minutes, half an hour, just to talk about the book, he says, he says, well, we won't do it now. He says, he says the Canadian release is, t is until September, but I want to be on. So, right. so I'm holding you that, to that, that Graham. <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome. Yeah, so we're going to probably do a Skype in type of a thing. From, oh, yeah. yeah. Anyway, so, yeah, yeah, no, I was just, uh, yeah, when you said that, it, that's that's immediately what went to mind. Is that, I mean, that's Graham's thesis about, that's about right. the world, right? Is that basically we have forgotten, he calls us a species with amnesia. Yeah. Amnesia that we've forgotten basically a whole portion of our past. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, no, I I, yeah. I wouldn't doubt it at all. Yeah. And really, like, you know, when you look at the Blackfoot stories, you have these sun and moon stories that go on. There are pre-human stories, mm -hmm. and human stories don't pick up until Napi. And this is during the time of the Ice Age. Okay. 
and um, there are like in inside of the Blackfoot stories there are memories of the species that were here during the Ice Age. Um, there's a one story that's really famous not be in the rock and that rock is actually located at, at Okotoks. Oh, okay. Which is what the town is the city is named after. Okay. Because in Blackfoot Okotok is the rock. Oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, see? Yeah. I had no idea. Yeah. 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 And uh yeah, just just west of the city there is this giant uh glacial erratic. Right. And that was Nopi's rock. Um, but the way that the story goes, that rock was way down in the south. Nopi was going around. He's the trickster guy. He's not, you know, uh, I don't know if you even call him human. You know, so, different so, people got different ideas okay. about who he, what he is. More like a... Like a, like a, more like a mythical creature or like a well, the, divine or a the, spiritual. Yeah, he's yeah. kind of he's kind of spiritual. In the in the stories, you know, he's described as a human, but mm. but really, like, I don't know if he is right. It's kind of like matapi in Blackfoot. It's a very interesting word. This is the word that means human, but matapi also means anything that's alive. Oh, interesting. <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah. So it's a really interesting word. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Almost like you mean like almost like a life force concept or Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, okay. It's living. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Happy. And so yeah, there's no other way to say human that's distinct from just that broad category. Interesting. Yeah. So so as a as a cosmology then, so sort of, you know, just even from the from the vernacular, from the words. Right. So in terms of a, you know, the, the spiritual concept of the world then. Right. You know, is that, I mean, because we talked about sun and moon and the balance between that. I mean, is that a, is that sort of a hallmark feature about, about everything in the world in terms of a Blackfoot theology, for lack of a better term, or spirituality? Yeah, it's definitely got this kind of st structure to it, you okay. know, that you have this male and female, and yeah. summer and winter, and, yeah. you know, cold and heat, and the sun, the radiation, mm -hmm. and the water, and these kind of, okay. you know, it's it's definitely got this structure, structuredness to it. And relationships between the those concepts, or? Yeah, the relationship yeah. between them is embodied in, in what we call Ipisoas, which is the morning star. Okay. And, um, yeah, that's their, that's their their love child right <laughs> oh okay okay yeah the bridge that's right yeah the bridge. <laughs> okay yeah so yeah you definitely have a, a relationship between them and Ipisoas is very much um uh a friend of human beings okay right okay so yeah he partners with 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 a human at one point uh, at the beginning of what you'd call like what most people recognize as the beginning of Blackfoot actual spiritual traditions, mm. like mm -hmm. when uh, we start be getting getting ceremony, the sweats, right, and sweet grass and this, this is an occasion where a, a human um, boy, young man, tries himself to travel to the sun, to ask for a scar to be removed. Oh, okay. Boy, yeah. Boy, the scar face. Yeah. And. Um, he ends up befriending the, the morning star when he does get over there. Mm -hmm. And that's a whole, that's yet in the sequence. I don't want to get there yet. Okay. I don't want to get there quite yet because we're at Nopi, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. And I did want to make the point that, that um, there is this, Nopi may still be pre-human. I don't know. Mm. Um, but then... I think there must have been people here because there's knowledge of those animals in those Nopi stories okay. and the changes, the ecological changes that happen. And really, Nopi um, is an embodiment of all the human foibles, like our greed and this kind of stuff. Right? Okay. All of the things that like we we do um, that that can screw up relationships. And so Nopi is going along and. Um, he comes with this fox in this story, and he comes to this big rock, and the rock is just naked on the prairie, and the story is really 
described as naked naked and um Noppy's got this big thick buffalo robe he's been wearing he's kind of tired of hauling this thing around <laughs> right so he acts he puts on this big act like you know this poor rock is here sitting here naked on the prairie and such and you know I'm gonna be very generous so I'm gonna <laughs> give you this robe because uh, you know I don't want you to have to be naked out here and all of this. He puts on this big show, gives the rock the, his robe, lays it over it, and him and the fox continue on. And down the way, a storm comes. And then Noppy is telling his fox, hey, go back and get my robe. <laughs> nice. <laughs> go back there and get my robe. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> So the fox goes back to the rock and says, Noppy wants his robe. And the rock says, well, I can't have it. He gave it, <laughs> gave it to me. It's mine. And I, I need it. Yeah, right? yeah. So the fox goes back to Noppy and says, oh, he's not. He says, no, he's going to keep it. And Noppy's like, no, nah, nah. he's, he's a rock. You just take it, right? <laughs> so he goes marching back there himself, grabs the robe and takes it and starts walking off and then the rock starts rolling after oh okay. <laughs> hence the migration yeah yeah the rock starts rolling so noppy starts you know running and the rock is rolling faster and noppy's like oh no you know this is <laughs> so he starts calling on these different animals to help him and there's this large bison you know this giant bison that uh, he calls on to help him and asks him if he could stop the rock so the bison's like no problem so he goes to butt the mm -hmm. the rock and the rock just mushes his head down and creates that hump on his back and <laughs> rolls on so it, it uh, mushes down the bison there's this really long-legged bear mm -hmm. and Ranapi asked the bear to try to stop the rock so the bear's like not a problem and he <laughs> tries to, you know, grab the rock and stop it. The rock just rolls over him and makes his legs short, and that becomes the grizzly bear. And then there's a big elk with the antlers going forward. And, right, yeah. And uh, when he tries to stop the rock, his antlers get pushed out like so. bunch of different, you know, modern animals mm -hmm. are created through this not being the rock story. And there's a whole series of noppy stories that are like this that have the 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 transformation of the megafauna or the previous animals mm -hmm. into their present form right. during that during that era um and it seems to be the message is that that all happened because of human beings um the way that we are, that our 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 kind of foibles, our okay, our greed and yeah. our uh, you know our pro our relational issues, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. So this may be, I think, kind of a whisper to that uh, idea that that a shadow of that of that story that we we did lose something and we dramatically mm. changed the world, something in uh, of the way we were doing things really messed things up and dramatically changed it okay um because you know i i know graham hancock's theory is that maybe the earth's yeah. crust the displacement itself, there yeah 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 displaced but the the blackfoot stories to me seem to indicate that it happened because human beings did something and that's a common theme you know among a lot of you know a lot of different um a lot of different traditions is is the human involvement of it yeah right and, and humans have done something to you know to anger the, the deities or, or or you know whatever the case may be right right and that yeah and then disaster comes and strikes down yeah 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 for yeah. sure yeah but he's uh yeah he's on the comet thing now though he's uh this new book he's going to talk I think he's kind of left the Earth crust displacement behind. Oh, he's he's gone from that. Yeah, yeah. to uh, I guess there's a lot of evidence that there was a comet strike about eleven thousand years ago. Oh yeah. Uh, that hit the ice sheet, and that's what actually caused the 
the collapse of the massive ice dams and, and that sort of thing. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see. I can't wait to see what his book is all about. Yeah, yeah, that'll be, <laughs> it's gonna be good. That'll be cool to hear his yeah. new ideas. Yeah, but yeah, something definitely. I oh, mean, something we have happened. a much much yeah. richer history than we're aware of for True. sure. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, just the commonalities between different places in the world, you got to wonder how, you know, the degree of commonalities between the world, you got to wonder what, right? you know, where, where do, I mean, yeah, people just coming and springing out on their own, it just doesn't, it yeah. just doesn't sit right. Yeah, yeah. no, no. Yeah. So, in those Napi stories, is the first time that you start seeing, maybe there, maybe this is during the human times, mm. um, but there's no Blackfoot story about, like, Adam and Eve, and this right. is how a man you know, okay. first comes about, and this yeah. kind of a thing. Yeah. It just kind of starts off with the Napi story. So okay, okay, yeah. Then you get, um, then you get Katoyis. There's another series of stories about this character named Katoyis, which is more like a Hercules type of a no. person. Okay. And this is yeah. a this is a guy that's going around mm -hmm. and and slaying all the monsters of Blackfoot territory, and these all the places that he did this. Um, are, uh, you know, they're, they're places that are considered like sacred sites mm -hmm. and this kind mm -hmm. of a thing. Mm -hmm. the, the, some of them are not known anymore. Again, it's that thing where we lost some memory. Right. You know, people were locked on the reserve until the 1960s, you know, uh, from, the, from the 1880s till the 1960s. So um, that connection to a lot of places was lost, but some of them we still know. Mm. And... Um, one of the big ones is writing on stone. This is where okay. this is where Katoyis story meets its end, hey, where he, oh, where okay. he ends yeah. up getting turned to stone himself. Okay. Um, but yeah, this was a this was a like a miraculous <coughs> being person who was born of a buffalo uh, blood clot and um, basically an abortion, basically oh. buffalo abortion. Okay. And then when. He, he was uh, gathered up by this old man and he was cooking cooking for his wife because his son-in-law never let them take any of the kill home, mm -hmm. any, any of the actual meat. He had to like thieve things like blood clots into his quiver and stuff and take oh, okay. home yeah. and live off of blood soup and this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And they're cooking this up and they start hearing this baby cry and they find Katoyas and the... Mm -hmm. Uh, in, in that uh, broth and they tie him up to each of the lodge poles one after the other each time they tie him up something said and that's another piece of the stories that you know always looking for I know somebody must have recorded the story in its full entirety mm. but something was said and then it grows and then it's put on the next pole and it grows oh and okay yeah so by the time he's been around those poles um, he's grown to a full man mm. and it, you know, in the story it occurs <clears throat> in one night, but, um, it also suggests that there's a link between the number of the poles uh -huh. and what's considered maturity. Right? Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, so yeah, he goes, of course he kills the son-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> The bad son-in-law, <laughs> as well as the, as well as the daughters that were, that were helping the son-in-law, but the youngest daughter that was kind of like, kind of like sneaking her parents' food, she gets oh. to survive, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> but then he goes down to kill all of these monsters and such. And there's one story that, like, like I said, these Blackfoot stories, there's like so many layers of meaning to them. Mm. One story I really figured out. Um, I know the Katoya stories. Like, you, you hear them and you just think, you know, these are like hero stories, mm -hmm. like Greek, like Hercules mm -hmm. type of story. But there is added layers mm -hmm. of, of meaning to them. And one of them in particular, he starts off in the, in the south. Mm -hmm. And he is just um, at this camp where he's killed these Pitsiks uh, and Atapi, these like snake people okay. um, that, were, that were kind of oppressing their camp. And the old ladies of the camp, you know, he's, he, he, he's heard about this thing up north. There's some problem going on up there where people are getting, <clears throat> getting you know, sucked into this, um, this, like, this wind that's taking them away and this kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. So he wants to go up there and see what this is and take it on, right? 
stop this problem. And the old ladies are telling, no, no, don't go up there, don't go up there. <coughs> He's like, no, this is what I, this is what I do, right? Oh, so yeah. how I roll. Yeah, yeah. So he starts heading north along the mountains, and he's got this little dog, a little like small dog. We call it Sisum, small dog. And um, he's going along at the edge of the mountains with his with his Sisum, and then he gets to this part where um, he starts feeling that wind, mm. right? Mm -hmm. It's it's a it's a easterly wind, and it's it's getting stronger and stronger the further north he goes and there comes a point where it's getting pretty hard for him to even move mm. for him to even walk and so he starts grabbing onto plants mm. and trees and things and bushes and stuff and to hold him as he was walking but the wind is growing stronger 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 and eventually those plants start ripping out mm. and um, then it, it's so strong that he's getting pushed and there's nothing he can do about it so he eventually just closes his eyes and runs with the with the wind. Okay. And mm -hmm. he goes where the wind is going and he runs and then eventually the wind just stops. Gone. And he opens his eyes and he's in this darkness. Mm -hmm. Dank darkness. And he starts, you know, listening and feeling his way around this place and you know he, he hears this, you know, this like heartbeat sound. And mm. He's moving around in this place, can't see anything, but he's feeling, and he finds like there's dead people in there, and there's people that are just barely alive, and there's animals dead and mm -hmm. almost, almost dead, and he's mm -hmm. feeling around. There's all this death going on, and he realizes he's in the middle of the of the stomach of something. Oh, okay. It's being yeah. devoured. Yeah. And so he has his flint knife and um, he wraps it on the on his forehead mm -hmm. and he tells everybody, he announces to everybody in there that he's gonna dance and if anybody can can dance with him to dance behind him and anybody that can if he can even just move, just move mm -hmm. in place. Right. And he starts starts this dance and it's like a hopping dance he's hopping around in there and uh his knife starts cutting into the oh okay the top yeah. of the stomach okay, as yeah. he's hopping around and eventually <clears throat> he gets to where he can really hear that heartbeat and mm -hmm. he jabs it up into there and kills the um the monster asinoko it's called the wind sucker <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or the slurper you might call it it's like when you you know when you're down to the last bit with your straw yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that sound that's asinoko okay that's what the monster's called so um so yeah he kills the monster and everybody gets out and it's kind of <clears> like you know it reminds me of all these you know the whale eats people pinocchio right. type of yeah, stuff yeah. and yeah. but what i figured out about it is that actually um it's a it's a real medicine story mm. um, because what happens you know in the in the Blackfoot the cosm the cosmology um, is mirrored on the landscape as well and such and so in the in your lodge even um, women sit on the south side and the people who own the lodge will sit on the far west side and the, their bundle um, which is like a Ch a child to them as mm. well is between them the man and the woman and you know their closest you know their own children are with them and mm. their elders that, that are closest to them are with them and um, then it goes on the north back through the men's side and in the the language of that <laughs> geography you know it's not like English where you got north south east west and it's they don't really mean anything but directions right right yeah um, but in blackfoot you know amskapuchs in the, the south actually means it's coming upward okay and amituchts the west mm. is the horizontally um high point okay okay and um apatrsots is an interesting one because it says it's kind of it's like it's saying you're behind Mm. Um, okay. 
So that one's a hard, <coughs> kind of a hard one to figure out. And then Binachbut, which is the, the east, is a downward um, horizontal direction because there's a horizontal downward in Blackfoot language yeah. and then there's a straight downward. Okay. So yeah. horizontal upward in Blackfoot and then there's a vertical upward. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> so it's, it's different. But um, the idea is also that, you know, life comes in with the mm. sun mm -hmm. from the east through the women from the south goes uh, upward okay. to the high point to the mountains mm -hmm. and then flows back down out of Blackfoot territory um, and so like when when people die you know in the past they used to be put on on uh, in the trees in the coolies near the rivers okay and the idea yeah. was there they're gonna go back downstream mm -hmm. um, to Omaxpatsuko, which is the big sand hills in the in Saskatchewan. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, but basically, you're going to disintegrate and be brought downstream. Okay. You know, disintegrating as you brought downstream. So, um, and a lot of cultures have this where what's high <coughs> is considered most pure and that and closest you know, to the divine. That's right. That kind of a thing, yeah. right? And that's that's similar. Yeah, that's very similar. So. When Kato is going along the mountains from the south, he's really, you know, um, in that in that high high mm -hmm. point. Mm -hmm. But this wind starts pulling him. Hey, mm. this wind starts pulling him in the direction that death goes. Okay. In the east. Yeah. And he grabs on the plants, medicines, yeah. and the medicines are holding him for a while, and then they start ripping out. Hey, they're not they're not working. They're not holding him, and then yeah. he, and then at some point he gives up, he quits against the against whatever's attacking him, okay. closes his eyes and just goes with it. Yeah. When he opens his eyes again, he's in that place where people are dying, and are already dead. Yeah. And I think I think that story is talking about terminal illness. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then what you do. Yeah. With it, you have to fight. <laughs> so does he get out? Like does he, he does. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They cut their way out. <clears throat> the ones that survive survive. Okay. But um, yeah, and it's interesting that you know at the Sundance, like a lot of people make um, uh, vows to dance at the at the Sundance mm -hmm. um, to try to escape terminal illnesses. Oh. And the dance they do is that. Oh, it's the same one. That's that same kind of dance, uh -huh. and the, and where the sun dance occurs is below the belly buttes, which is actually considered the the body remains of that ass in a gulp. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah. Wow. it's yeah. I really think it's about terminal illness. So mm. yeah, these stories have these totally different layer levels and stuff yeah. to them. Um, and there's a lot of them I haven't figured out, but I do mm. I do really know. The Blackfoot stories pretty thoroughly, mm. um, just as stories. Sure. And then, yeah. as I go through life, I kind of you can see the start oh. seeing different oh, dimensions. This is what this could be talking about. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so, after Katoyis, then you get into um, Scarface, mm. which is what we were right. started to talk about before. Yeah. And this is a boy who's who's born <coughs> with a. A blemish on his face. He's got a l ugly looking scar, mm -hmm. and um, and he grows up really poor child. Um, his parents are dead. He's an orphan, but he's living with this old lady. She takes care of him, and and um, but he's kind of picked on by everybody and stuff. And mm -hmm. as a young man, he falls in love with this girl, but this girl is really well to do. Her dad's a chief. And you know, she's all beautiful, and he's this really ugly, picked on <laughs> kid uh, with no, you know, no, mm -hmm. no hope, right? <laughs> so it's like Down Abbey. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> um, but this this girl is refusing to marry everybody. Mm. Like, there's a lot of guys interested in, in her, but she doesn't want to have any of them. And people start like kind of making fun of her too mm. they say oh she must be like a eunuch or something something's wrong with her right maybe she's got men and women parts we don't know something <laughs> <laughs> why is she so afraid mm -hmm. 
and uh, so they're kind of like picking on her. So her parents are giving her a lot of pressure. You know, you gotta yeah. do something because mm -hmm. you don't want to get a bad name for you being weird. You know, <laughs> so she's feeling bad about herself. And at one point, the young men like they um, they goad uh, Scarface into going to ask her to marry him. Mm -hmm. They tease him into it. And he has nothing to lose, so he, he uh, does. Mm -hmm. And the girl tells him, uh, if, if you can have that scar removed, I'll marry you. An impossible uh, yeah. <laughs> mission, of course. <laughs> <laughs> um, so he's all embarrassed and, and everything, but he's also thinking, well, I'm going to see what I can do. So he goes to the old lady and says, I'm mm. going to try to find the son where the son lives and I'm going to ask him to remove this scar. So he sets off on this on this journey and it's a real ordeal that mm. he goes through um, where he's going different places and he's fasting and fasting and fasting and thirsting and meeting different spirits. And, mm -hmm. you know, this is a story that can take hours to tell. Oh, wow. Properly. Okay. Yeah. And, um, but every time he stops to fast and stuff, um, right before he does so, he encounters this, this old man and this old woman. Mm. And he, he hears this song and he comes across this lodge and it's the old man and old woman's lodge. Mm. And, um, and so he keeps running into them and he's asking them, you know, I'm trying to find the son, do you know where to find him? And they'll tell him, well, why don't you go look up there? And he'll go up there, and that's where he'll do his fast. And he meets up with something else, not mm -hmm. the son. Mm -hmm. Eventually, like, he's just destroyed. He's starved. He's, you know, he's in bad physical shape. His clothes are all worn out. He's just, um, and he comes to the edge of this water and uh, he's hallucinating and having all kinds of problems and mm -hmm. he just decides he's going to uh, put his feet in the edge in the water and he's just going to lay there and die <laughs> <laughs> so he lays down and uh, these swans that were out on the water mm -hmm. come and um, take him and tell him to keep his eyes closed and they take they take him and they fly with him and when they tell him to open his eyes, he's in this very different place. Okay. And yeah. This is the this is the sky world that he ends up in. Okay. He's, at, he's yeah. at another spot with water, <clears throat> and um, he he gets up and he starts exploring, and he comes across this really fancy set of clothing that mm. you know, and he he's like almost naked, just uh -huh. rags, and he's considering taking this fancy clothing and um, then he doesn't because it's not his eh? and he's virtuous that's yeah, right yeah. he's virtuous <laughs> and uh, he, he meets up with this boy and he's he starts talking to the boy and the boy realizes that you know this guy had the chance to steal his clothes and he didn't mm. and um, so the boy thinks you know this is a good guy he's a decent guy and I his friend, mm -hmm. and he's you know Scarface reveals I'm looking for the son, and the boy's like that's my father, right? Oh, okay. So I'm gonna take you home to meet him. So he takes him home, and the only his mom, the moon, is there when they get to the house, and his mom's like this is no good. You know your dad doesn't like these people. Right? <laughs> 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 he's not gonna be happy about <clears throat> this. No. And uh, so we could hide him behind the liner, the li lodge liner, but he stinks. He's, he, Dad's going to know exactly right away what's going on. Um, but at least if he's behind the liner, he won't get burnt to mm. the crisp right away. So they, ha they hide him back there, and the son, when the son comes home, sure enough, he's like, all right, something's, something's, something's not right here. Yeah. <laughs> This place stinks. <laughs> Something's going on. So they tell him what's happening. And, and uh, so the son, you know, reluctantly has them um, paint, paint him 
with uh, with ochre. Mm. Um, or oh, actually, I think they paint they paint him black and um, bring him out. And so he meets the son, and the son is like, "All right, well, you, my son, and my boy, really likes you." I don't like you, I don't want you here, but you can stay for a couple of days and then you've got to go home kind mm. of a thing. So he's staying, he's staying there and um, him and the boy are going out to the next day to go do their thing and the son is telling them, all right, you know the kind of places you can go. Don't be going over there by that water where I told you not to go, right? So <laughs> Sure enough, that's where they have huh, to go. Huh, this has remnants of another story. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's where they have to go. So they go there, and these giant cranes attack them. Oh. These great big cranes. And Scarface takes a stone knife and fights the cranes and kills them. Mm. Seven, seven cranes. And um, they go back home that evening, and the, the son's like, so what are you what do you guys do today? <laughs> <laughs> so they have to they have to confess what happened. But when he hears that they that he killed the cranes, yeah. then he's like, gee, this is the thing, this is why I didn't want my boy out there because these cranes have been after him. And um you killed the cranes. Given that you've done this, I'm gonna give you whatever it is that you've Mm. looking for okay yeah and so Scarface <clears throat> tells him the whole story there's this there's this girl there and and uh, she doesn't want to get married to anybody but the, I asked her she said she would marry me if I got the scar mm -hmm. removed and the son tells him well the reason that she's not she's refusing to marry everybody is because she's one of my own wives and um, you know the if 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 uh, if if I give you what you want, it means you're breaking up a marriage, and that's a big deal. That's a problem. Right. Yeah. Right? And um, <clears throat> but we can do it. But I'm gonna give you something that you take back, uh, uh, a ceremony to take back with you. That you that the people will do, and you remember the kind of you you, you through it you remember. Um, the pain that it causes when you break up a marriage. <laughs> and so this is part of the Sundance okay. that, he, yeah. that he gives him. And to take over, to, to remove his scar, they get, he gives him the, a first, the first sweat. He actually builds four sweat lodges. Okay. And in each of those sweats, the morning star sits on one side of the sun and Scarface sits on the other. And... Um, the moon sits outside the door, which is why in Blackfoot sweats women don't go inside. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's just the men. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So the doors close, yeah. and he has the sweat. And when they've done the ceremony, he tells the, the moon to open the door, and she opens it up, tells her to look inside and point out which one is her son. And so she easily points out that it's it's the morning star. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but there's a bunch of sand underneath where Scarface was sitting. They go in the next sweat and the same thing. Each time they lift the doors, you know, the moon is able to tell, but there's the sand left over. And in the fourth um, sweat, uh, when they lift the doors, the moon looks in and she misidentifies. Oh. Yeah, she misidentifies which one is her boy. And uh, as as Scarface, and that's when they know he's been healed. Okay. So then they send him back down to Earth. This is a long story. They send him back yeah. down to Earth. <laughs> Even in the shortest version I can yeah. give you, it's a long story. <laughs> send him back down to Earth on the Milky Way <clears throat> with those, with those, with that. Uh, with those clothing mm, from the morning right. star. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The clothing has an emblem of the sun on the front. Okay. And it has scalps hanging down from the arms that uh, represent uh, the cranes. Oh, scalps. okay, okay, yeah. And um, they send him down with the sweat, hmm. sweet grass that was used in the sweat, 
the black paint that was used. Um, there's a there's a bundle that now is, belongs to the leader of the Horn Society that he comes down with, and this is why the leaders of the Horns wear all black. Oh, okay. And um, yeah. that's called a buxipistan. Their bundle comes from this. And he's sent down with a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. And this is the stuff that is, forms the, the early basis of actual Blackfoot spiritual practice. Okay. Yeah. So this is the, or this is the <coughs> earliest, earliest stuff. Um, after that story, um, then you get into the beaver bundle. Mm -hmm. And mm. yeah, and that, I think I talked about that on the last you did, podcast. Yeah. yeah. Um, just as a very quick refresher, what happens in the beaver bundle origin is that you have a treaty that's made between the human beings and the animals mm -hmm. of the upper Saskatchewan and upper Missouri drainage basins. A treaty that's made and it's physically represented as the, as the bundle. Mm -hmm. And ultimately what's, what's laid out in that story is that human beings are recent. Right. That we're, in terms of species here, we're the new kids on the block and we're not really adapted to this place yet mm. it, it sets out almost like a um, uh, what would you call it a purpose for our lives okay yeah um, a, a, or more like a mission I guess not so much a purpose for our lives but our mission at the at right now is to become better adapted to life in this place. Mm -hmm. And the way that we do that is by learning from the elders of this place who are the other species. Okay. How they how they live here, um, how they've adapted to be here. They're, they've lived it so long that it's become internalized in such a way that they're born with it now. For the most part, you know, there's not a whole lot of learning that has to go on for the animal to mm -hmm. know how to live here. That's how long they've been doing it, living okay. it, so that they've internalized it. We try to internalize as much as we can through through practice of mm -hmm. things that we learn from these from the animals. Mm -hmm. um, and if we're able to, you know, if we that whole process of embodiment that we're seeking in Blackfoot is called estomato. And it, in sign language, it's like you're, it's like you're eating something that's okay. being brought into your body. Right. Um, so the practices that we have that we get from those animals, um, is considered a form of nutrition for sure. us. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That we're growing into something, maturing as a species in okay. a way, and the hope is that you know eventually we will be. Um, through these practices, we will be adapted to this place in such a way that all of our actions in our lives will automatically um, help others. Okay. They're, like in the case of the beaver, right? The, the beaver uh, from the beaver bundle is the model that we're trying to emulate. Mm -hmm. Everything that a beaver does helps all of these other species just, mm -hmm. just, um, on its own accord. It's not like the beavers goes out of the way and says, okay, I'm going to create this environment for these others. He's just carrying out his life, but the way he carries it out um, is such that it helps hundreds of other species. Right, yeah. Right? That's what we're shooting for. That's so our, like, almost like a steward, stewardship kind of role? Or a, it's it's not even stewardship. It's, it's kind of just like um, Sim symbiotic. Symbi oh, symbiosis. Okay. Symbiosis. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, and right now we're so out of whack with that. Like we're in, right. we're, we're not living symbiotically at all. Right. right no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, what kind of practices in our lives can we adopt that is going to be beneficial not only to us but to all these other everything everything yeah. that yeah. lives here? That's the kind of idea of Blackfoot fitness. Um, you know, in terms of adaptation, there is still the idea that nature selects for for adaptation, mm -hmm. but the model of fitness is how symbiotically right. you're integrated into this eco society. Okay. In sense. Yeah. 
So relationship. That's right. Yeah. Relationship. Okay. Huh. Wow. <laughs> yeah. It, well, it's it's a it's a it's a really interesting progression through the you know, it's it's almost ordered to an extent, right? Like it is. You know. It is, and then after the beaver <coughs> bundle, you start seeing all the other bundles come into. Okay. You know, each one has its own its own origin, but it kind of the tone of what we're doing is is kind of set through through Scarface and through the Beaver right. Bundle stuff. Another a, kind of a side note on Scarface that I didn't mention is that I, I think another level to that story is that the message is that we are already in the Lodge of the Sun. Okay. Um, and I, f I forgot to kind of follow up on that. The old man and woman that he keeps running into yeah. is the same old oh. man and woman that he eventually meets as the sun and the moon. Okay. He was in the house of the sun, of the, sun the whole time and I kind of think that it talks about like the story itself lays out an annual sequence again okay. lined up with the with the lunar cycle right the seven cranes are the seven winter moons right I was going to ask the, about uh, that yeah, yeah. The, the sweats <clears throat> are the, um, the the period that we call misampso the, the long rains in June mm. and I kind of think that it has you know that it's actually an annual cycle that is talking about sure. an annual cycle of life in the lodge of the sun, right. where we, where, yeah. which is where we live. Where we live. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's like you were saying before. You know, it's so tied to the place, right? To the land, to yeah. the the geography, to everything that you know is is here and it lives here. You know, the geographical features. You know, yeah. I mean that. Yeah, that, that comes out pretty yeah. pretty strong. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's definitely connected to here. Mm -hmm. And that's part of why, like, we, there was <clears throat> true diversity in North America mm -hmm. before the European invasion. Yeah. Because, of, you know, I think in general, people here, and I think indigenous people around the world have this idea that your, your knowledge is, and your way of life is connected to a certain place mm -hmm. and a certain ecology. Mm -hmm. And so... There would be no reason to go somewhere else and try to migrate it over there, or try to get those people to yeah. do like you do because it's a wouldn't different make any place. Sense. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wouldn't make any sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can have hundreds of cultures, mm -hmm. and nobody's trying to, you know, control um, in that in that kind of like cognitive way. You know what other people are doing, mm -hmm. the way that they're living, their cultural way. They're not trying to right. acculturate them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hmm. Doesn't mean there's no war, but there. No, but it's <laughs> it's it, but it's it's different though, right? That's, That's right. A, it's a different it's a different conception of you know, well, toleration and 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 also sharing in the human experience. That's right. right. Yeah, yeah, and that that in <clears throat> fact that treaty that's made at the Beaver Bundle origin is. That that uh, process that they go through there in Estes, and it's called, is what's used to make treaty with other peoples, mm -hmm. even when mm -hmm. they come into this territory. Right. right. Okay. Yeah. So it's all, yeah. you know, that was the model that it was, it was okay. based on. So the idea was anybody coming into this Upper Missouri and Upper Saskatchewan River basins, any new peoples coming in here that were going to want to live here, mm -hmm. would need to have this relationship done to them. And, in fact, Prince Maximilian from Germany mm -hmm. was one of the earlier guys that came through here. Okay. And um, he was transferred to Beaver Bundle. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. To try to make that, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, understood. This is, yeah. you're going to have to learn from us and from, you know, what we've learned from the animals and stuff, how to live here in, okay. in a way that we're supposed to live here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> but, of course... Europe had a different tradition. Of <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, although, yeah, yeah. <laughs> didn't quite the, the understanding. Didn't quite right. Us. Yeah. 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 I, I wanted to ask you, Ryan. So, just sort of in terms of general concept. So, I mean, obviously, the sun and the moon, as you as we started off this whole discussion, you know, play prominent place. So, is it fair to say that the sun is like a deity? Is it, or is that maybe... Uh, I don't know if it's a deity, because it's actually there. It's there, like yeah. We can go yeah. out and, and look at it, and it's very clear that the nearer <clears throat> the sun comes to us, 
the more that life is generated. Right. Yeah. So it it's uh, I f I see it is very different than um, in many of the kind of the world religions mm -hmm. where where you're asked to have this concept of right. of, of a of a god that you can't see or something that's yeah. Yeah, that you don't have a tangible representative. There's no faith in the Blackfoot sense, right. right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. This, it's it's there. Very pragmatic. <laughs> That's like, right. But the spirit. But and I had this conversation with actually something not too long ago because we were talking about spirituality versus religion, and you know, um, I mean, there's a concept of religion of being, you know, the big monolithic churches or whatever. But right. that's only one way of looking at what, what religion actually is right religion can also just be you know the way that the pragmatic way that you live your life right and 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 that's that's an expression of religion i mean religions become a pejorative term but it's in essence that's it, it's, it's it's what it is it's a it's a living out of um of what your belief system is right yeah yeah and it's it's <clears throat> not like there isn't any belief in spirit right the black there there definitely is yeah i mean there's belief in spirit there's belief in reincarnation even well i was going to ask about because when we were talking about you know traveling the cycle and right ending up in the in the monsters but it almost sounded like uh i mean when you're talking about illness but it almost sounded too like a bit of a a story about reincarnation like yeah that was the first thing that came to my mind when you were saying that yeah yeah there is a real famous <clears throat> case um of a guy named Igaskini who's come back several times okay it's called Igaskini the translation is low horn mm. um and um yeah there's a there's a there's an Igaskini that's that's had this reincarnation but um but one of the things that's a little bit different about the Blackfoot tradition is like there's no attempt to try to um, what do they what do they call it when somebody tries to figure out what their past lives were before like past life regression kind yeah, of thing yeah regression yeah. thing yeah 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 we don't do <coughs> any of that um, because the idea is that we're totally focused on on the on the life and the living and what we're doing right now right whatever is going to happen you know, in terms of our spirit, like what all of yeah. that aspect is, we don't know and we can't know. And there's a recognition of that in the Blackfoot. Like we can't know it. We'll get, you know, we'll, we'll find out, we'll when, find we get out there. when we get there, <laughs> but yeah. no reason yeah. to waste our life right Worrying now about it. Yeah. Being, yeah. trying to sort that out. Right. Um, when it's impossible to know. Right. Right. Okay. So there is, there is like the case of Iguskini where it was real obvious that, you mm. know, a child, new aspects of his former life and that kind of a thing um so there is a belief that there is reincarnation mm -hmm. this kind of a thing there is also a very you know there is a belief in in spirit and stuff i mean i i myself recently had an experience where i think my friend's spirit was kind of guiding yeah. something that was going on with me just the other week um well i had i had recently had my best friend pass away right yeah and um he and i were supposed to go to do a think tank in New York mm. um, together and he passed away before we mm -hmm. were to go so I was going to go do the think tank on my own mm -hmm. and I went uh, through Great Falls Montana and this was the think tank was in New York so I got on the plane in Montana mm. I went to uh, Minneapolis St. Paul's and then I was going to get on a connecting flight to go to LaGuardia in New York mm -hmm. And we, I got on the on the plane, went out on the runway, and then they said we have to turn back and go back to the to the terminal. Um, something's happened, so they brought us back to the terminal. Then they told us that a plane had went had slid off the runway in LaGuardia, and crashed off the side of the runway, and there's fuel on the runway and this oh, and that. Okay. And so the LaGuardia is closed right now, yeah. so we have to get off the plane. And when we got off the plane, they said, our flight is now officially canceled. Oh. You got to go see some of our representatives and try to figure out, you know, yeah. a different a different way. But LaGuardia is going to be closed for at least the next seven hours. Okay. 
So I go, went to go see a representative and, um, and got a ticket for, uh, I got an evening ticket to go to New York, but then they also gave me like a standby ticket for an earlier flight just in case they mm. opened LaGuardia a little bit earlier. Mm -hmm. And already I was starting to get a little bit concerned because, um, like my friend, the circumstances around his death, mm -hmm. he was, he went to travel to Regina mm -hmm. and, um, to, to, to do a workshop there. And when he went to go get on the plane in Calgary, he left his home here in standoff, uh, in farm four area on the blood reserve. And he drove by halfway to Calgary and then he realized he didn't have his wallet. And so he turned around, went back home got his wallet and then went all the way back up to the airport mm -hmm. but um you know of course like at home we all think he wasn't supposed to go and that was the that was the sign oh, okay. he, he forgot his wallet so that he wouldn't be able to go right but um <clears throat> but he managed to make it anyway and um he didn't heed the the sign and a lot of times you know something like that can happen and, and it's just a fluke and so it's you know you never know when to listen and when not. So when this went on with me, like mm -hmm. this is fresh in my mind. Right, yeah. And uh, I was thinking, gee, maybe I'm not supposed to go to New York. And my wife is, I'm talking to my wife on the phone and she's thinking the same thing. Like, this is not good. And um, maybe you should just turn around and go home. Mm. But I said, well, I'm gonna stick it out and see what happens with these, with these next flight. Uh, if something else goes wrong tonight, then I'm going to stop. And so uh, I waited and I was able to get on the standby flight and got on the airplane, took off, um, going to New York. We got about halfway there and they said, uh, we're going to land in Detroit. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they said, we're going to land in Detroit. LaGuardia is still closed. We thought it would be open by now. Uh -huh. um, we have to land in Detroit, but we have too much fuel to land right now. Um, we had put a, put in a bunch of fuel to, to deal with the weather in New York. So we're going to fly in circles for 40 minutes, burn off our fuel, then land in Detroit. So that's what we did. We land in Detroit, and now my wife is sure. Yeah. You know, you're not supposed to be going to New York. Yeah. And I'm thinking, you know... I shouldn't ignore it. And um, so I called the people at the think tank and I told them, I don't want to, you guys have put out a lot of money to fly me out there. I don't want to, uh, to uh, hurt the project. Mm -hmm. But I, you know, my gut tells me I shouldn't go to New York. But you know, in in a, in an attempt to still participate, mm -hmm. if you could just put me up in a hotel here in Detroit, I can participate, like phone conference right. or Skype yeah. or something like that. Yeah. And um, so they agreed to do that. Yeah. They put me up in a hotel, and so it was nighttime already. I went to my hotel and woke up the next morning, had room service bring me breakfast and then I participated in the think tank for until the late afternoon and then we were going to take a break and come back for a little more of the evening session and while I was um and this the whole purpose behind the think tank was to talk about the difference between mainstream education and indigenous education okay. like true yeah. indigenous education mm -hmm. So while I had the break, I thought, well, I'm going to walk down the street. I looked on my maps. I knew there was a grocery store down there. I'm going to go there and get some snacks and stuff for the room and mm -hmm. this kind of thing. So I walked out the hotel, started going down the street, and I realized as soon as I got off the ho off of the grounds of the hotel, I'm in the Henry Ford complex. Like this whole place is, like the Henry Ford complex is huge, mm -hmm. eh? Mm -hmm. Their factory, and they got their museum, and they got the, yeah. you know all of this stuff right in the middle of Henry Ford's factory. And uh, as I was walking, got to the grocery store, got my stuff, and started coming back. It started to hit me. I remembered that every time me and my friend had done a presentation, we'd done many in the past yeah. um, about indigenous education. He always brought up Henry Ford. And, oh really? And how <laughs> and how Henry Ford's, you know, uh assembly line 
had influenced mainstream education right. the way we do the way we do education and also the way that it's that, that it <clears throat> that it's guided by industry's needs and yeah. these kind of things but the assembly line model and i thought that guy you know he's having a good laugh at my expense <laughs> That's a lot of effort to get you to Detroit. I tell you right now, that's a lot of effort to get you to Detroit. I've never wanted to go to Detroit in my life. And of nobody, all the, nobody does. Yeah, and of, and of all the hotels that can put me at, like the Henry, the Ford complex is huge. So there's nothing around there. Yeah. Like, why would they put me in this isolated hotel out in the middle of nowhere? Um, yeah, my my feeling w was at that point that I knew why I had yeah. ended up in Detroit was because I was supposed to bring that into the, the discussion as my friend's contribution would have been, and so uh, so I did that, and then then I felt better about <laughs> New York, and I told them, <laughs> yeah, can you send me to New York because I got some other stuff I want to do there. <laughs> To my amazement, they did. Seriously? <laughs> yeah, they oh, did. Oh, that's hilarious. That's hilarious. Nice. Yeah, I had, I had some Casey training I wanted to do there, you know, and uh, surprisingly enough, they sent me, so. Wow. But yeah, there's that kind of stuff in the, and that's, um, uh, you know, in the, in the Blackfoot tradition, there is this belief in spirit, mm. um, the, but it's no, there's no attempt to like try to explain it and what it capture it mm, capture as to what it is. It's yeah. just, it's there, but that's right. it's just, it is what it is. Yeah, that's yeah. right. And yeah. and um, and that we should, you know, be aware of it and be attuned to it. And because a lot of times, um, we can get warnings. And mm. stuff. Yeah. So just a it's something you'd said before too, in terms of of animals and as the elders and and talking about spirit, the the idea of like uh power animals or you know messages from animals is that sort right. of where that the that idea comes from where you yeah definitely to... okay um a lot of like in the past and not so much anymore because the the church has really put a kibosh on it mm. but in the past every young man would go out and fast and try to try to get some kind of a gift okay uh, a lot of those gifts came from animals some of them came from just spirits right but a lot of them came from animals. Okay. Um, some something that they could use in one way or another in their lives. Um, so yeah, that's where a lot of that comes from: is people that would have experiences while they're fasting, you know, mm -hmm. might have an animal that becomes a very close ally to okay. them in life, and yeah. that they can call on in you know certain times of needs to use their gifts. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. I, I wanted to ask you, can I ask you a couple other things? Are you, yep. are you good? Because um, we talked about, so we talked about the sweat, right. and, and, and we also talked about sweet grasses. So, because uh, sweet grass is very important, so is, is sweat, the sweat. So I'm just wondering if right. you can talk a little bit about, about... About the sweat and the yeah. sweet grass? Yeah, or? Mm -hmm. yeah both. Or, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah the, the, the sweat, again, I think is another, like, cosmological model for the most part. There's a whole, um, there's a trail that goes into the sweat, and it's, it's a representation of the Milky Way. Okay. And the, the person who runs the sweat is representing the sun, and, um, and you have, it's a, it's almost like a model of what happened in Scarface. Okay. Whoever's, whoever's asking for the sweat is, is, uh, Boluxki or Boya, the, the scarred one. Right. And then whoever's his very <coughs> close friend sits in there on the other side as uh, as the morning star. Mm. You may have other other uh, men in there to mm. help. Sometimes the man who's running the sweat might have another elder sit close to the door and help him run it too. Mm. Um, women are not in Blackfoot sweats um, because they already have their own cleansing. Oh that they do on a lunar cycle. Okay. And so they're considered to be much more um, much more connected to the, you know, the natural powers right. of the yeah. sun and the moon. Yeah. And so <clears throat> they don't need 
the sweat lodge mm -hmm. um, in the way that the men do. So it's a purification then? Is that yeah. It? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a clean, it's a cleansing and okay. a healing. And it's like, you know, having your scars removed. Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. Okay. Yeah, yeah. and the scar yeah. is very metaphorical. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, even even in the sweats, a lot of times, you know, that'll be something that that they'll pray for is that our scars could be, be removed okay. just straight straight from the story. But the, the but the scar is a metaphor for something something that's happened to you that's left a left a stain. Hey, mm -hmm. um, so trying to trying to wash that away, okay. get rid of that. Yeah. Um, the the sweet grass is much more difficult to to try to nail down like why sweet grass mm -hmm. and not mm -hmm. something else. There are, there is actually several different um, plants that are used for, for smudging. Mm -hmm. um, one of them is the, the alpine fir, okay. um, subalpine fir that's called Cutbrius, <coughs> the, the sweet pine. Um, another one is Omachgats, uh, which is the um, fern leaf desert parsley. It grows up in the mountains. Okay. It's a big it's a big root. Mm -hmm. That one has an origin story behind it that's I know why the, we use that okay. for the for the smudging, yeah. um, and that one's used by the by the people with the beaver bundles for the winter smudge. Okay. They got it from a woman who had married a star at one point and had a child with a star, and then okay. came back down to earth with some transfers from the sun and the moon again. Um, this would be like the female half of the. Oh. You have the you have the Scarface story. Right. Then you got this female, this woman that marries a star and goes to live there in their lodge, and gets teachings from the sun and the moon. Okay. But then is told never to dig this one root. And she digs that root. Yeah. And is able to see down from the sky world to the human world and is forever homesick after that. So the moon decides to. Sun and the moon decide she has to go because okay. she's never going to be happy there right. again. Yeah. So <clears throat> she goes back down to earth with more to add on to the ceremony that was given in the Scarface story. Um, and and even there had been more additions to it with the beaver bundle as well, where the elk had uh, elk had uh, added to added to it so that the woman that was running the ceremony before this woman came down from the sky was wearing this headdress that was considered the elk's representation of the elk. Um, and again, that, that story with the elk was really connected to marriage and fidelity and marriage and this kind of a thing. Um, cause that, you know, that ceremony really surrounds that theme. Okay. Yeah. So here you have a woman that's, her marriage is being broke up because of her homesickness. She comes down with yet another addition to that ceremony. Um, and she comes down, she's wearing this juniper wreath, okay. and she has her child from the, from the star, and she has a, the digging stick, and she has that root, that big root, mm -hmm. and um, she comes down and is, that big root, that's, that smudge is going gonna, is gonna to be used from then on in that ceremony, and um, instead of sweet grass, they're going to use that, okay. that big root. And, um, so, and of course, you know, that, that hole it left in the, in, left in the sky, you know, it's just a, a symbol that, that using that root is, you know, you're able to, um, then, uh, converse between those worlds. Oh, okay. Okay. So okay. she, she goes down and, um, she's wearing that wreath and she's got this baby and, she tells the people what happened to her, and the people just laugh at her. They're like, yeah, you married a star, right? Yeah. <laughs> you didn't go run off with some guy, yeah. and now he's like, it's like, you know, get out of here, and now you're coming back with this bastard baby, and yeah, you married a star, right? They just laugh at her. Right? Yeah. But the the Iachimix, the people that belong to the water that are taking care of the beaver bundles, they hear her story, <clears throat> and they believe it. Mm. And so... To, to validate it, um, they transfer her that elk headdress to wear in place of her wreath. Oh, I see. Okay. And tell her to run that ceremony 
and add that root to it the way she was okay. taught. And um, and in turn for and they give her they sing to her too in that ceremony they sit there and they and they sing um, songs to her that come from that elk headdress. And in turn, she gives them that omachgas that root to mm. use as their winter smudge. Oh, okay. The smudge, they're very powerful. You use it in the winter because it's very powerful, more powerful than the sweet grass. Okay. Um, and the winter is the time when you need the help the most. Right. right? So, yeah. yeah. So that that's how <clears throat> the beaver bundle ends up with that. How mm. we end up with the sweet grass? It comes from the Scarface story. Right. The sun gives is, uses it in the in the sweat. Okay. Itself, eh? Um, and gives it to Scarface as part of the complex that he brings down with him. But why the sweet grass and what's the significance of the braided, you know, mm-hmm. sweet grass? Um, some people say that the reason that it's braided is because the braids themselves, it, um, the, it, the three strands, um, stand for the sun and the moon and the morning star. Okay. And when they break it off, they'll actually break it off in those pieces. And the, the, when they put it on the coal, they'll, you know, they'll pray to the sun with that first piece. And okay. Pray to the moon with the second. Okay. Pray to the morning star. Yeah. Um, so some people go about it that way. Some people connect it with the braids of the hair in the same sense. Um, but me, you know, I'm a little bit like there's some, I know there's gaps in my knowledge around the sweet grass, like okay. why this, why the grass? Mm-hmm. So it's a, it's an interesting question. Okay. Yeah. I told you about as much as I know. <laughs> Fair <laughs> deal. <laughs> well, and yeah, in truth, we're actually, we're coming to the end where I, I'm actually going to be able to upload the, <laughs> the podcast mm. to the, uh, to the uh, to the website. So oh, yeah, we're yeah. coming to the maximum. Link. Coming to the maximum. Link. <laughs> you're yeah, you're you're close. Yeah, to the to that. So, but yeah. Uh, but I uh, just wanted to thank you for for being on again. Oh uh, yeah, my pleasure. Yeah, and uh, maybe down the road we'll we'll chat a little bit more. Definitely. Yeah. There's there's lots more to talk about. I mean, I know like the theme <clears throat> today was this the spirituality mm-hmm. and I spent a lot of time on the stories. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I actually I heard from a lot of people when we were talking last time that that was a that was a really important part for them. Oh, so, really? The yeah. beaver bundle story. Yeah, the beaver bundle story oh, was, was important. So, yeah. It's good. Hopefully yeah. some people will get a, a couple of new yeah, pieces. But yeah. yeah, it's it's good. It's good to know that you know, then I'm able to through the podcast to, mm-hmm. sh- to share some of this with people living in this area yeah. because, you know, from my perspective, anybody that's living in Blackfoot territory should be oh, familiar. Have with a little bit of knowledge. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. fair deal. Yeah, no, that's fair. So, no, good. Uh, well, thanks again. I appreciate it. Thank you. So, um, so yeah, and thank you everybody who's tuned in. Uh, we've got a couple of podcasts coming up in the next little bit. Um, we're going to be talking. Um, um, with Belinda Croson again, um, we're going to have some candidates for uh, more of the provincial election. It looks more and more like we're going to have a provincial election, so we're going to have some candidates on here in the next little bit. Um, and then we're going to probably do a few podcasts interspersed over the month of April, but it's going to slow down a little bit just because um, I've got some projects that I have to get done. Um, <clears throat> and then hopefully in May and June again, we'll speed up and then. Uh, yeah, we're gonna. I'm planning. I'm planning a trip to Peru, and I'm actually going to. There's. I'm going. I'm planning on some experiences that I'm going to have down there, and we'll see about maybe doing a bit of a podcast with that when uh, when we get done. But I'm not going to say too much right now. Ryan knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, but anyway, good um, luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> What's well, interesting because when you're talking about yeah, anyway, well, we'll we'll, we'll chat about that. But, Anyway, uh, thank you very much, everybody, for, for tuning in. And until next time, we will see you out there.